Hello, my name is Ed Newbold. I'm a wildlife artist at the Pike Place Market. I have a store at First in Pike in the Pike Place Market. I've been there for 36 years. This is a movie about ethanol and electric cars. It's meant to uh, complement an ad that I'm running in the Seattle Times on May 5th, Sunday, 2019. That's an enlarged copy, it won't be that big. But I'll first introduce the painting behind me. It's an acrylic on foam board. The landscape is loosely based on Eagle Harbor and Bainbridge Island. And the name of the harbor gave me an idea for what bird or mammal I should put in the painting. And that's it right there. These are kayaks. I, you will never catch me in a kayak because I drink too much coffee. Now let me quickly read the text of the ad. Ethanol is our country's bipartisan boondoggle, the silent hoax that has wreaked environmental destruction, brought pollution to our waterways, and turned much of the U.S. into one giant inorganic cornfield. Ushered in with do-gooder rhetoric, the ethanol mandate has led to the loss of more than 7 million acres of prairie wildlife habitat, put upward pressure on food prices, and has actually increased climate pollution. The insane land needs of ethanol are now driving agricultural into the, agriculture into the Amazon basin, where Brazilian le Brazil's leader Bolsonaro seems only too happy with the reign of murders against indigenous forest defenders. So far, ethanol has been politically bulletproof, but it has an Achilles heel, electric cars. For electric car owners, ethanol is ancient history. Go electric. At the risk of making a long, boring movie, this will be quick, I would like to make a few more points about ethanol. One is that the debate is dormant. You can bring it up with a fellow or sister American and you're not likely to tap into too much passion. It hasn't, uh, uh, when it comes to the intense partisanship that has swept over America recently, ethanol has been left out. Uh, and in a partisan world, it's not always good to be left out it's almost completely ignored. As a result, there are a lot of misconceptions about ethanol. Many people still believe the early propaganda that ethanol would alleviate climate change. But scientists have shown that by dri driving agriculture into wetlands, woodlands, and prairie, climate, uh, it actually increases climate polluting black gases. As a result, here is what I consider the most crucial economic fact about ethanol. It is not scalable. The basic stats are these. We use 40% of our corn crop to replace 5% of our gasoline needs. It's arithmetic. If we wanted to replace another 5% of our gasoline needs, we need about 30, 38 million more acres of America and there aren't 38 million more acres of America to plant in corn. And that's not even counting the fact that it will ruin your engine if we get much over 10%. 10, 10 Another point is, not, is that not only does ethanol have a voracious appetite for land, it has a voracious appetite for water as well. And not only does it use way too much water, which is usually subsidized or underpriced, it also pollutes water. Corn uses more fertilizer and pesticide than most row crops. And it now dominates the landscape using over 90 million acres of America. So the ethanol mandate is the biggest factor by far and has spurred the development of the dead zone in Gulf of Mexico and the toxic algal blooms in Lake Erie. Now here's a picture of the toxic algal bloom in Lake Erie. I don't know if this is visible from here. But that was a 2014, 2014 bloom that pretty much ruined the tourism industry anywhere near Toledo or Sandusky. By expanding corn ethanol uh, into, by expanding into uh, unused land, previously prairie lands, uh, grazing lands, etc. 
and woodlands, uh, ethanol has already ruined much of the prairie wildlife habitat, including what used to be called America, North America's duck factory, the Prothole Prairie Country of Minnesota and, uh, and North Dakota and that area. And it is driving birds, many birds like the chestnut collared longspur, the western meadowlark, Baird sparrow, Franklin's gull, in the direction of extinction. But it has also destroyed rat wildlife and habitat all over America, turned much of our country into inorganic cornfields. The absurdly greedy land needs of ethanol and other government mandated agrofuels are now destroying the Amazon rainforest. Brazilian agribusiness interests have been blamed for the majority of the indigenous people trying to defend their homeland from uh, blame for the murders of these Indians who in Brazil and, and surrounding countries have been trying to defend their countries from deforestation and their, home, their homelands. There is one environmental organization that has stood above the rest and admitted they were mistaken in giving ethanol a green light back in the 2000 aughts, and that's the National Wildlife Federation. Here is a report that can be found on the internet by Googling its name, Fueling Destruction. It makes for very de depressing reading, but I very much recommend it. Fueling Destruction, the Unintended Consequences of the Renewable Fuel Standard on Land, Water, and Wildlife. Ethanol, as I mentioned in my ad, has been politically bull bulletproof. We sadly may never get rid of it, but as an individual you can take a huge step toward defeating ethanol, of course by walking or bicycling, but most people need a car, so by buying an electric car you can do this. This will allow you to be a free American once again, not an enslaved consumer being forced to destroy the Amazon rainforest. I know not everyone can afford an electric car. I own a 1992 Geo Metro and can't buy a new electric right now, but my heart is in the right place. I see lots of fancy cars out there. Let's resolve to make all the new cars sold in America electric and defeat this scourge against the environment for all time so that our wonderful farmers can go back to doing what we love them for, growing our food. Thank you very much. This is Ed Newbold, Wildlife Artist, Seattle, Washington. Pike Place Market, the store is at the Pike Place Market right in from the newsstand and opposite De Laurentiis. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.